Hi, welcome back to Bike Forever. So today's video is a little delve into machine code programming using Sinclair ZX Spectrum, released in 1982, I think it was, by Sinclair Research. Sold about five million units in its whole lifespan, which I think went up to 1992. We're gonna. Describe a little bit of a program, although we're not going to really show it, but it's from a book called uh, Mastery Machine Code for your ZX Spectrum by Tony Baker. Highly recommend getting this if you've if you got any interest in uh, machine code programming for ZX Spectrum. And a lot of it's applicable to any Z80 CPU based computer. Um, it's a pretty good book, definitely recommend it. I got it second hand. Uh, on World of Books, which was pretty good. Um, so, the, the program I'm going to explore a little bit is, uh, or we're going to use to write a small machine code program just to fill the screen, and it's called Hex LD3. I think it's described in chapter 10. There's hex LD and hex LD2, which are both things that bootstrap you into being able to fully code up hex LD3. <laughs> so it's quite a long winded process. You go through the chapter and it describes what each bit of code does. Essentially, the program is a way of listing, writing, uh, deleting, inserting, copying code, uh, machine code. Um, and a lot of it is written in machine code but as we can see here is the basic part of it um, which isn't actually that long uh, but because it's written in machine code the bulk of it uh, all the uh, all the functions that are called from it uh, runs fairly fast uh, it doesn't do any disassembly I think that's further on in the book I haven't got that far <laughs> But well, that's uh, called hex LD uh, four, believe it or not. And I think the eventual there's there's a drafts program in there in the book which uh, you need to have written all this to be able to uh, enter. It's quite fun programming all this up, copying it from the book. Try to do it all on ZX Spectrum as well. I'm lucky enough to have a div MMC cartridge, so saving to the SD card, just do snapshots, whole memory, that makes it pretty simple. What we're going to do is quickly run through, as I say, a little program to, um, we're going to enter a program to just fill the whole screen uh, with, um, well, set every pixel on the screen uh, using just right into the pixel data. So on the um, on this program you can enter the machine code pretty much wherever you feel fit to do. Um, the book suggests for small programs F000, so that's what we're going to do. Um, so to write to screen memory on ZX Spectrum, the pixel data actually starts at 16384, which is an, in hex it's easier to remember, it's just 4000, 4, 4000. Uh, you shouldn't really call it 4000 actually, but it's just how it's written, because <laughs> it's not decimal. But, um, <clears throat> in fact, the book's quite um, adamant about that. It doesn't like you calling something like uh, 17, or it tells you to uh, pronounce it 17 hex. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't really matter, but it's just a convention. Um, so anyway, I'm rambling a little bit here. <laughs> but... Um, Getting back to writing to the screen, pixel data starts at 16384. The screen has got uh, 192 uh, pixels, sorry, 192 pixels down um, vertically and 256 pixels horizontally. And um, obviously at the top left is uh, at address 16384. So after the pixel data, uh, so 6144 bytes as pixel data um, and after that is colour attribute data which we're not going to get into here um, but that's basically how you, you can set colours 
but they're limited to eight by eight, I believe it is, um, character blocks. Um, so you can get clashes and things. But people, uh, people who've written programs who know what they're doing for this have got around that and, and produced graphics, which are uh, pretty cool. And they're actually it's, it's a u kind of unique um, looking uh, screen. Uh, you see in most of the games, you definitely you see a game written for ZX Spectrum, and you know it's a ZX Spectrum game. So, to write this program, we're going to need two nested loops. If we're go if we're using um, one of the uh, auto decrement and uh, branch instructions, uh, because it just works on the B register, which is eight bits. Um, so in the eight bits, you can only store two five zero to two five five. And obviously we need to get to a total value of 6144. So, anyway, let's crack on and carry on with writing this program. So, first thing we need to do is load a 16-bit register with the base address of screen memory. And 2.1 in hex is the opcode to load HL, the HL register. And we're going to load it with 4000. Before anyone screams at the uh, video, <laughs> because it's low, it's uh, low byte, high byte uh, byte ordering on the spectrum, that is actually uh, four thousand in hex. So that's the base stress memory. Fairly straightforward so far. Uh, now we're going to load, uh, make the first load of B register which is LDB, which is zero, the opcode is zero 06. We're going to load that with C0, and that is 32. Let's just double check that. <laughs> Got a, sorry, no, that's 192. <laughs> um, that's the outer loop. We, we could do this the opposite way around. So we're going to have... Um, like 192 times 32, so this is the first loop counter that we're setting up. Um, we're actually going to have to push that to the stack because we're going to have another loop. Uh, so it's not C9, it's C5, is the opcode to push BC to stack. And then immediately after that, we'll load B again. <laughs> So this is fairly easy so far. Now we're going to load it with 2 which is 32 in decimal. So we've got, um, so far, load base address of uh, screen memory into HL register, which is a 16-bit value. Load B register with 192. Push to the stack the B register. And next, and into that. It is to uh, load B register with 32. So we set up both loop counters now. Um, and all we're going to do is now write the first uh, screen address. So that's um, going to be an uh, LD indirect. So whatever HL is pointing at, and in the assembler that will be LD bracket HL. So that instructions 36 or 36 in hex. We're going to actually going to load that with FF, so 255. Um, and then we're going to increment HL to move on to the next one. So that's a nice simple one byte instruction, 23. The next uh, going to end or so we're going to have the decrement auto decrement and jump uh, instructions djnz djnz it's not easy to say so that's it's opcode 10 and we're actually going to need to um jump relative here and um we're going to go back to uh, f08 uh, because we don't want to obviously set that um, B register again. <laughs> so jumping back to F008. 
and because it's uh, like a relative um, jump, that's actually FB, so this is like two complements, um, so this is essentially uh, minus four, I think, uh, to get back to that instruction, because it's, it's actually from this, this address of this byte, so like, um, if you imagine FF is 255, but FB is, you know, four less, less than that. Um, so yeah, so do that, and if B reaches zero, it'll just skip past that to the next thing, which will be to pop off the stack the original first loop counter dimension, which was uh, 192, and the instruction of popping off stack C1, nice and easy single byte instruction, obviously. Uh, all these instructions you can look up on a website or look up in a Z80 book. Uh, it's just constructing programs by typing in hex is like not the easiest thing because unless, well, you get used to the codes um, as you go. If you've written a long program, especially, <laughs> you know, uh, things like C9, which is return, um, all these single bytes. And up curves fairly straightforward as well anyway so we want the final uh, loop um, control so this is again going to DJNZ uh, which is a 10 this time it's F5 so we're actually jumping back um, so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 bytes to there. Obviously we don't want to load 192 again. <laughs> so F5 if you imagine the tooth complement that is like um, 255 minus 10. Let's just check that. Um, <laughs> so we've got to just a normal calculator. Um, 255 minus 10 it's 245, so in hex, I'm probably wrong, but um, 245 is F5 in hex, so we're actually uh, an indirect jump back up. So this is actually relocatable code. I've not had any, I've not had to do any um, call and returns in this, or jumps which are to specific addresses. These are all relative to the, to the, um, instructions okay and, and all we need to do now is type C9 and that'll return us to basic so <laughs> so that's the RET uh, instruction so what have we got here we've got um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 bytes um, obviously could have told that from F010 which is uh, 17 in hexadecimal um, and yeah this this should so to exit from um, this mode of program which is just entering code press enter again and to run it um, we do run 700 in fact let's just list 700 from the basic just, just kind of show that. So it calls a few subroutines. In fact, just one that line eight thousand, which calculates, uh, asks you to prompt you to enter an address, and then calls this bit of machine code using the randomized user, which is from the book again, and that is to just effectively execute the code and handle the return uh, back to basic a little bit um, more cleanly. So I think it also checks the address you've entered as well, just stuff like that. Um, so let's do run 700 and so all we have to do is type in F00. Now we have to be quick to see this run. This is just going to fill the screen all with all black. Hopefully, fingers crossed, if we've not made any errors. Yay, there we go. So... <laughs> 
<laughs> so I was surprised that it worked. Um, but uh, yeah, there you go. We filled the whole screen worth of pixel data. Obviously, we're not writing. I don't believe you can write oh, to this this bottom area, or possibly what's happened is because it's stopped at that basic line. It's actually scrolled it up, and it happened so fast you didn't see that bottom two lines being written. Uh, if you were to write this program in basic, you could do that, uh, but it would run um, a lot slower. <laughs> so yeah, that's just a little introduction. I know this video is about 16 minutes now. Uh, well done to anyone who's got this far. Um, you deserve a medal. <laughs> but hopefully that might get some people... Um, into a bit of machine code programming there's so much stuff on the internet uh, that you can search for to about z80 and zx spectrum um, machine code programming and also don't forget this book which you can get from archive.org but um, as i said it's nice to have a paper copy and um yeah you can run all this on an emulator as well like um I don't know, I think there's one called Specky uh, or Fuse. For, uh, basically for any operating system, you can even run it on um, on your mobile phone if you've got a smartphone. So yeah, uh, please have a go. Uh, if you're a software developer that um, just stumbled onto this video and you write C Sharp or you write uh, Java or anything else, Rust, any modern I love programming it's still worth getting into a bit of assembly code just to sort of show you or get into machine code just just shows you a bit about what's happening underneath in any any machine will be similar to this any CPU as at the core of it is running machine code well thanks for watching again and Please try and have a go at this. Bye for now.